Welcome to another Lightroom Classic editing video. This time we are going to turn this boring shot into a very dramatic scene with dark clouds and vibrant color tones. So let's go. If you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file. You can find the link in the description of the video. So let's go. Right away you can see this shot is very very boring. We don't have much visible structure in the clouds. The foreground is also a little boring as well with those not very saturated colors. And I want to fix all of those things. But first off, what's really driving me crazy here is the skewed horizon, which is due to the wide angle lens I used here. So let's fix that in the lens correction tab right here. And while we're at it, I'm also going to click remove chromatic aberration, like I always do with my images. Then to fix that distortion, I'm going into the manual panel and here you have a distortion slider. So once I push this one, you can see we can fix the horizon and make it look much more straight. So I'm going to push it quite a bit until I'm getting a good looking result here. Normally I would get some gaps towards the edges, but I already have cropped the image as you can see, so we don't have any problems here. And you can also see I'm keeping this tree right in the center, so all that is looking pretty good for now. Then let's work on the look some more. I've been struggling with this image for quite a while, it's been laying on my hard drive for over a year now, but I think I finally found a good style for this shot. So. I do want to make it a lot darker, therefore I'm going to drop the exposure first. Just a little bit. Alright, and right away I'm going to drop the highlights all the way. This helps revealing some more detail in the sky. Still not enough, but we will fix that later. For now, let's increase the blacks. Just to prevent some heavy underexposure. Just like that. Now the histogram looks pretty good. I do want to make this image look a bit sharper, so I'm going to add some texture and let's add some clarity as well. Okay, and as I said in the intro, I want this to be very saturated, so I'm going to push the vibrance just like that. Perfect. Now let's make this image more dramatic, and therefore I'm using a lot of local adjustments. As you can see in the masks panel, there are already a few masks applied. And I want to start with the foreground. Here I have this very very soft linear gradient going from the very near foreground covering the whole field. And I'm going to use this to simply add some kind of vignetting effect making the bottom part darker. Keep in mind I'm not going to drop the exposure or the blacks or anything because that would mean I end up with underexposure. I just want to drop the whites all the way down. And this will make this part a little darker. Then I have another linear gradient, you can see with a very sharp edge just for the field in the foreground right here. And that is because I want this field to look sharp and crisp. So let's increase the texture. Let's increase the clarity quite a bit. At the same time I do want to add some temperature making those flowers look a little more yellow. All right, we could even push the saturation in this case. Okay, that's much better already. Then there is one more linear gradient for the foreground and you can see it's just for the top part of the field. For this I have created another very sharp linear gradient which stops at the end of the field and then subtracted this linear gradient to get a soft blend. So only the top part of the field will be affected. And the reason is I do want to make the top part a little brighter. So here let's bring up the exposure. Not too much, that looks good. The foreground is looking much much better but still the sky is very boring. So let's change that. Again I'm using a linear gradient covering most of the sky right here. And the first thing I want to do, as I said in the intro, I want this to be dark. So I'm going to again just drop the exposure. All right, this again will help with recovering some details in the clouds. Next up, we can work on the structure by bringing up the contrast. And this will also introduce some of those lovely blue color tones up there, which work great with the yellow colors in the foreground. For 
even more structure we can work with some clarity actually i think i'm just pushing it all the way up because that looks really awesome with those clouds then let's further bring the brightness down by dropping the blacks all right and i think i'm also going to drop the texture just to prevent some heavy noise in there we don't really need texture in this area anyway so that's looking pretty good okay and finally we could for some more contrast even use some dehaze just be careful with this slider since it's very very powerful all right that starts to look really awesome now i have another linear gradient for the very top part of the sky again that's just to bring down the exposure some more perfect and then there is this radial filter left just for the center part and that's because i want this area to be a little brighter than the rest of the image so i'm going to increase the exposure and i'm also increasing the whites that looks lovely and that's it for the local adjustments now we're almost done with the editing there's just a bit more color grading going on i'm heading straight into the hsl panel in the saturation tab i just want to get rid of the greens in the foreground so let's drop that all the way down and at the same time i do want to boost the blue saturation a little bit all right that's it for the hsl panel i'm also skipping the split toning in the color grading panel instead i want to go ahead all the way down into the calibration tab and just bring down the blue primary hue and here i'm also increasing the saturation perfect now that's a really cool image we could sharpen it a little bit so let's head into the details tab and i'm always applying the same sharpening radius all the way down detail all the way up and just playing around with the amount and then of course applying some masking right here perfect and that is pretty much it for the editing in lightroom now i do need to clean up the shot a little bit so for that reason i'm going to use photoshop so let's switch over all right here we are in photoshop i'm going to use the spot healing brush and just clean up a few sensor spots and i also want to remove those signs with the spot healing brush perfect now there is a little gap right here in the foreground which is a little annoying therefore i'm using the clone stem tool and i just copy an area by holding down alt key and clicking in here then i'm dragging this part over and just fill this gap just like that now let's see i do want to take a look at the histogram you can see we are missing some highlights so i guess i want to fix that therefore let's apply an adjustment layer here let's choose levels again here you can see the histogram on the right side we have the point for the highlights now i'm just dragging it down until it touches the histogram so we don't overexpose anything and thus we have added some more contrast and brightness to this image which looks really really good now so at this point let's merge those two layers and i'm not sure if i do want to apply some further editing but i do want to check the nick collection just to be safe so you can see i'm using the pro contrast filter right away and i think it looks really good especially for the sky let's make it a little more dramatic here uh, maybe that's a bit too much let's bring it down that is looking pretty good but i do want to add a negative control point for the foreground because i don't think we need that contrast in here all right and let's hit okay all right and that's it for editing this image so i hope this was interesting and helpful if you have questions left as always feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video